Arica. Not exactly a household name in video games, is it? The founder, however, Akira Nishitani, was one of the creators of Street Fighter 2. They worked with Capcom for a number of years, and their first fighting game was Street Fighter EX. Anyway, for this video, we're here to talk about the obscure. Street Fighter's hardly obscure, and we don't get much more obscure than Everblue on the PS2. What is essentially a first-person diving treasure hunter sim, come point-and-click adventure? Why don't more people talk about it? The story is you're a novice diver called Leo, who searches the depths for bounty and trinkets. As the story unfolds, he learns about a long-lost treasure hunter, whom we learn about from the playable intro. The whole idea is to go diving, fill up with loot, sell in town to buy better equipment, and repeat, edging the story on as you progress. Money made buys new suits for better stamina, tanks for longer dives, fins for speed, and bigger sacks to hold more loot. Leo has a sonar which bounces back the direction of treasure. Red dot at the top means nothing, but green means you're on the trail of some goods. The sonar can have elements bolted on, such as wood and metal, which sets it to find these items depending on what you want to look for. Before long, Leo is searching sunken ships for treasure and MacGuffins to push the story on. Like gems, treasure chests, even hats. A lot of the time you do find items that people in the town have, have lost, or from lost loved ones, things like that. This is the part where the game becomes more tense, as each ship, especially the maze-like ones later on, will seal your doom if you lose direction. Finite oxygen and carry stamina all play a stressful part in returning to the surface. The hub town is also full of side quests, like kill the drunk here by feeding him booze, and taking photos for this old weirdo to get excited about. It also has the appraisal shop, where you get items looked at, and also treasure chests cracked open. There's also a museum where you can donate things that you find. Considering Everblue came out in 2001, it uses its limitations to its advantage. Sure, it's hard to see in the dank dark bow of a ship with only minimal torchlight, but that adds to the claustrophobic atmosphere of the dive, formerly known as Draw Distance. Even more obscure than the game itself though, Everblue got a PS2 sequel. Also, Arica went on to make spiritual successor Endless Ocean on the Wii. Oh, and they also made those little known games Tetris 99, Mario 35 and Pac-Man 99 on the Switch. But who's heard of them?